You might already know this, but the developers of Kenna Bridge of Spirits went viral for creating a masterpiece of animation based on Majora's Mask. When they announced that they were making a game, many people expected it to look gorgeous like the short, and indeed it did. But I want to focus on just how influential Majora's Mask was on this game, to the point where I'm just starting to think that these guys have an unhealthy obsession with it. Now I know what you're thinking. Kenna is the cutest, most wholesome game ever. How can it be inspired by the most morbid game that Nintendo has ever produced? Well, Kenna Bridge of Spirits is like the therapeutic version of Majora's Mask. See, in Majora's Mask, the themes were all subtext and left there for the player to unravel, while Kenna tackles them head on and does it in a much more healthy way. Link is a silent protagonist who can't emote or react to all this psychological trauma he must be going through. All he can do as an avatar is save the kingdom, and he can't have a character arc. Many people have thought that he was dead the whole game, as he aimlessly wanders across the land that could very well represent the afterlife. But I have to disagree, simply because Link can't react to his surroundings because he is a silent protagonist. When Link guides the spirits to their resting place, he does it because he's trying to get to the dungeon, not because he wants to help them, making him come off as emotionless. Maybe this is due to him being trapped in the time loop for too long, and that's why his standard emotionless feels a lot more noticeable this time, since he's become numbed to the death of everyone around him. But where Link coincidentally helps the spirits in his game, Kenna makes it a point to focus on that grief and to say the things that Link never could. Kenna is a spirit guide whose job it is to help ghosts resolve their regrets and peacefully move on to the afterlife. Kenna reassures her spirits that everything will be peaceful when they pass on, and that she's going to make sure that their work is finished, helping these distraught spectres process their deaths. Meanwhile, the spirits of Termina have no idea what this little kid is thinking. He just silently and aimlessly wanders around, and they can only hope that he listens to them, it must be like going on a walk with a psychopath. I mean, if I had to trust someone to tie up my loose ends, I don't think I'd want it to be a mute child who carries around a weapon and only makes a sound when he commits acts of violence. Majora's Mask's ghosts are creepy because there's only one side to the conversation. Link can't say anything back, which leads to theories like him being dead himself, or whether the ghosts are even there and he has PTSD from Ocarina of Time. Remember, he's an adult trapped in a child's body, and no one but him remembers all the heroic things he did to save the world, and now he's seen that world get destroyed over and over and over. Kenna helps her spirits pass on lovingly, removing Link's creepy silence and replacing it with warm and kind feelings to help ease her spirits into the great beyond. While the connection between the two games could be argued to be circumstantial and nothing more than using the same common theming, the next part is definitely a direct homage. When you help a spirit pass on a Majora's Mask, you're rewarded with their essence poured into a mask that allows you to take on their shape. To me, these masks symbolize being controlled by negative emotions, and these masks are the coalesced negativity that was just expunged from the spirits. This is shown by how Link appears to be in extraordinary pain when he puts a mask on. Clearly, putting this thing on his face isn't a pleasant experience for him. So, the masks are the physical manifestation of all the pain that Link has just helped someone overcome, and now he has to go through that pain himself every time he puts one on. Kenna Bridge of Spirits does nearly the same thing on a thematic level. When Kenna frees one of the spirits, they each leave something behind. This would be representative of all the feelings and emotions that they didn't take with them to the afterlife and they're represented as masks. While Kenna doesn't go any transformations when wearing them, they almost certainly symbolize the same thing they do in Majora's Mask. While I'm all fine with loving homage, you haven't just taken the theming of the original, you lifted the exact metaphor and used it to illustrate that meaning. Of course, it's not a genuine criticism of the game, but more an observation that these games are a little too similar for their own good. Either way, Kenna Bridge of Spirits is the modern, more child-friendly take of Majora's Mask that we might not have needed, but I certainly enjoyed it. I'll be back in two days. In the meantime, here's a video about why the Ancient Cistern is the best Zelda dungeon of all time.